that's going to enable the entrance of a U.S. CBDC. But it's got to be a big enough crisis. And so this will be, it's got to be obvious. It's got to have impact, immediate impact. And then you'll see how fast Congress will change tunes and all of a sudden the U.S. CBDC will be given to everybody. Hey, everyone. Today, we're embarking on an exhilarating journey into the realm of money and digital currencies with the incredible Lynette Zhang. So fasten your seatbelts because we're about to plunge into the frenzy surrounding central bank digital currencies, CBDCs. Imagine a financial roller coaster with governments, banks, and economists all vying for a spot on the ride. But what does this mean for you and me? That's exactly what we aim to discover. From secret executive orders to global gold rushes, we're peeling back the layers of mystery and challenging the conventional wisdom. So are you prepared to dive into the future of cash in this digital era? Let's embark on this financial voyage together with Lynette Zhang. I think that a large enough crisis would justify anything they want and Congress would pass it. I mean, but again, their job is to keep us calm and keep us in the system. It's called perception management. And that is an official term. That's not my term. That's an official term. And, and to be perfectly honest with you, I know that there are tests that are being run and I don't, frankly believe him because his job is to keep us calm and keep us in the system. If we really thought that there was going to be a banking crisis, are you keeping your money in the bank? No, you're going to go pull it out. And then that just exacerbates their problem because there is not enough. There's, there's barely anything in the FDIC diff fund. So I think they're much further along than uh, they want us to believe with a central bank digital currency. I think the bank, I mean, you look at, we're the largest economy and then China's the second largest economy. If you look at the Bank for International Settlements, which is the central bank or central bank, and you look at their monetary flower, then you see that they use both, they mention both wholesale and retail CBDCs inside of that. So he's just saying it, and, and time is going to tell whether or not he's telling the truth or they're going to find some kind of justification for all of a sudden, well, look at we've got this ready. And I think what's going to happen, I think it's just going to be sprung on us. The question is not will they do this and is that it? Because it won't be it. When they first bring the CBDC out, it will not be the end of it. It'll just be another tool in the transfer because what the central banks talk about is that it eliminates their, the, um, it eliminates the need to keep interest rates in a positive territory. There are no, they, these are their words. Once we have a CBDC, there are no limitations to how low we can push interest rates, which really means eat your principal because they've already gotten all the purchasing power out of it. So maybe he's telling the truth, but that's not his job. His job is to keep us calm and protect the banks. So to do it through the banks doesn't make it any better because that was an issue that they had to resolve. They had one directly with the public, then what happens to the banking system? And the banking system is their mechanism to distribute their policy. Go back to 2008. That wasn't that long ago. And the whole country went up in arms with that 800 billion bailout. But Congress did it anyway, didn't they? Because the crisis would justified that behavior. Now, if the next time the, and I was there in 1987 on Black Monday. So I know what a stock market implosion looks like and feels like and tastes like because I was a new stockbroker when that happened. And that justifies a big enough crisis that scares enough people, justifies all of a sudden giving people, well, look, look what happened during, you know, the Cerveza crisis just for, amazingly four years ago now, right? And all the money that they pumped into the public hands to spend, that's going to enable 
the entrance of a U.S. CBDC. But it's got to be a big enough crisis. And so this will be, it's got to be obvious. It's got to have impact, immediate impact. And then you'll see how fast Congress will change tunes. And all of a sudden, the U.S. CBDC will be given to everybody. And I, I do want to say that in a number of those countries that have been experimenting with the CBDCs, they're not necessarily getting public buy-in. Now, China is an exception to that, but Nigeria is a country that tried to issue the CBDCs, but they didn't get the public, but 5% of the public to participate. So they created crisis in order to get higher participation. Don't buy it, right? But if all you have is inside the system and the system implodes and you lose your income and you lose your wealth and they give you this these CBDCs for free, you're going to go out and spend them. The question is, will you get any any new money that you get? Will you put it back into the CBDC? Will you adopt it? If you don't have food, water, energy security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, which is arguably the most important piece anymore, and shelter, you're not going to have choices because you're going to be beholden to whatever they want you to do. And that fine tuning, yeah, they said it. We can have a finger on the economic button 24 seven. So they want you to spend, we're consumer, look at it's the consumers that are being tasked with supporting all of this garbage that they've created. Because we've been witnessing this consistent and steady risk transfer from the few to the many from the old hands that used to buy treasury bonds to the new hands, the mutual funds and the individuals, this is hot money. So when enough risk has been transferred to the public, I'm telling you, you'll see it. That's when it will become too expensive to support this game, but they are working voraciously at getting those CBDCs everywhere in the world. Even though the public in many places has spoken and do not want them, they will cram it down our throats. And unless you have something that is truly outside of the system, what choices will you have? None. You're going to have to do, there's your social scoring. You're going to have to do what they want you to do. And, and that's a wrap, folks. We've navigated the twists and turns of the CBDC revolution with Lynette Zhang guiding us every step of the way. What an incredible journey it has been. But before you head off, remember, this is not the end. It's merely the start of our exploration into the future of finance. So if you're brimming with questions, bursting with theories, or simply want to dive into the conversation, leave us a comment below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to ensure you never miss out on our next exciting adventure. Stay savvy and continue to dream big. Thank you.